Hi, my name is Beth and I'm going to show you how to make a dog bed with blanket tutorial. I have here the pieces cut out. Um, here is the pile of pieces which I'll explain in a moment. And here is my paper model that I made beforehand just to make sure that I knew what I was doing and that everything worked. Um, I find that to be helpful. This is the first time I'm making this so bear with me. What I've done is I've created a circular um, piece of fabric that is approximately the size that I want for the pet bed. Now this is a bed made for rats, so of course it's scaled down. For dogs, of course, this would be much bigger. What I recommend is to measure the size of the dog and then add some seam allowances to make sure that when it's sewn, it has some um, generous room for the dog to lay comfortably. Same thing with rats. So this piece right here determines the size of the finished blanket. And we're, this is going to be the touchstone for everything else we go with. So that piece corresponds to this one. And the next piece in my pile deals directly with that first circle. What I did with the circle was once I determined how wide it was, how big it was, I measured it across here for its diameter and I got 10 and a half inches. Your piece, of course, will be much bigger because it's for a dog. Um, the circumference of a circle is diameter times pi. So here we have the diameter of 10 and a half. So if I multiply that by 3.14, I get approximately 33. So that's what I've done for the inches here. Now I made this just as wide as I wanted it. It's not really that wide. The seam allowances on each side will take up a significant amount of that too. So this is going to be a relatively um, shallow pet bed. If you wanted a plush one, you could make it deeper, of course. Um, that's up to you, of course. But the length is important. What I've done is I've added a seam allowance on each end and then made it 33 inches. Um, so it's actually 34 inches with my seam allowance. This next piece will be the bottom of the pet bed. Now this is a special piece and it's not quite done yet. As you can see, it's slightly bigger than the 10 and a half inch diameter of the first one. And that's for a special reason. If I was just making this pet bed for rats, I wouldn't worry about this step. But since it's for dogs and it'll be much bigger, this is just a model. Um, since it's for dogs, what I'd like to do is I would like to make this into a pillow sham. So it'll, I'll cut this down the middle and um, make a seam on each, a hem each raw edge, so, and then fold it over so that um, it will be essentially a pillow sham so you'll be able to remove the batting and um, wash this in the washing machine. So this piece isn't done yet, but it's slightly larger. It's about a, um, let's say, 5% larger than the, the, the first one. Maybe 10%. Let's go with 10%. Now this is the blanket that goes on top of the pet bed. I've got one piece that's the, um, that's the soft stuff, which will be um, in contact with the pet. And then this will be the cover piece. Um, I'm going to sew these together first and make this my first part. What I have is um, a circular half moon, which is approximately the size of the bottom piece that I made. It's only, I only did half of each of one of those though. Because they're not covering the whole pet bed, they'll be sort of like that. This is the fleece, or rather the stuffing that goes in the middle. You could put um, a piece of um, foam in there, whatever you have to make it, or even polyfill would work. Um, to make your pet bed successful. So let's go ahead and get started here and I'll show you my steps that I'm going to do to sew this and let's hope it all works out because I haven't tested. As I mentioned earlier, these are the pieces that are going to act as the pet bed cover. Now they're a half circle, they're about 10% larger than the actual dog bed bed part and there's a reason for it. Um, I'm going to finish this piece first because it's integral to building the rest of it. So if you'll bear with me, what I'm going to do is put the right sides together. This side will be on the outside and this, this side also will be on the outside. So I'm going to put those together. And because this will be a 
bed where this seam right here will be the public side and be the most worn, most used. I'm going to start in the crescent here to where I'm going to leave the seam open to turn it inside out. So normally if I were to make this into a hammock or something I would make a seam along the straight edge so that it would be easier to repair once it was turned right side out. But because this is a special case I'm going to hide it along this inseam here. I'm going to go ahead and sew this now and turn it right side out. So the next time you see this it will be right side out and sewn. Okay, now as you can see this is right side out. I've gone ahead and taken the liberty to put a fancy stitch down this side because this will be the public side. This will be the way that it looks when it's actually on the pet bed. This side will be against the pet. So with that in mind we're going to, and here is my little um, little turny out thing. I'm just going to leave that edge raw right now. It's not that important. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the top of the pet bed here, my other circle, and I'm going to look at it. I'm going to use it right side up for right now. And um, since it's right side up, I'm going to get this one and put this one right side up too. Put it fur to fur here. This will be that side and I'm just going to line it right here. I'm going to kind of adjust it so it um, fits the, the back of the circle, I guess will be the part that I care about the most. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go around and pin this to this original circle here so that it's just like that and becomes a piece just right there. Then what I'm going to do is put this around this point, but I'm going to do something special with this. Here is the back side and here is the front side of this. What I'm going to do is lay the front side, I'm going to pin it all the way around this circle. And I'm going to do it in such a way that I, when I do pin it, I'm going to sort of make little pleats here to make, the, make it pin correctly. And I'm going to go ahead and pin it all the way around this whole edge here and get it ready to sew. So um, uh, that's what I'm going to do right now. Everything's raw as of this moment, but um, I'm going to pin this right sides facing. This is the right side, this is the right side, all the way around so that I can make the pet bed properly. Okay, and you might want to get fancy and make sure that this lines up with the front or the back of the pet bed, however you'd like to do it. I think I'm going to do it starting at the back. Okay. Okay. Okay, now you can see the Rat Burrito in all of its glory. I've got the, the sides fit pinned, right sides facing, down to the top, and I've got the little Rat Burrito pinned in there too. So the seam is in the back, right where it should be. I've got a slight overlap here, so it will be fit together nicely, and it'll be easy to sew up. Um, and that's pretty much it. It's pinned on the, you know, all the way through. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just seam around, just a running stitch or just a normal sewing stitch, all the way around here. And um, I really don't need to leave anything to turn inside out because this thing's going to turn itself inside out without me having to pull it through anything. I'm just going to roll this over and it'll be inside out. So I won't need to leave any gaps or anything like that. I'm just going to sew all the way around and come back to where I was and maybe overlap that a little bit for extra security. And then I'll be done with the top part, the um, that part, and of course the middle part. The, little, the last part will probably be the trickiest and that's going to be the pillow sham uh, aspect of it plus sewing it on to this thing that's already been created. But let's see what kind of trouble we can get into. When you next see this piece it's going to be sewn all the way around, the pins are going to come out and it's going to be turned inside out, right side out I should say. And then you'll be able to see where the pet can crawl in. Okay this is getting smaller as we go so make sure when you measure to measure big enough for this original circle. Um, that your pet will have not only a seam allowance, but also uh, an allowance to be able to stretch out on it too. You can see it's getting smaller, or it will after this step. Okay, see you in a moment. Okay, so this is what I have after I went ahead and took all the pins out. It is a right sides out, it looks like this. But we don't really want it right sides out quite yet. Um, you can start to see how it's forming here 
Uh, these will be the sides and this will be where the pet sleeps is in there and um, it'll be padded right here this will be the actual underneath that so now that I have this part done notice that the right sides were facing here I want to get this part and I've, you can see I have it folded in half um, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut it in half right down the middle here and then I'm going to hem each of the sides maybe with a fancy stitch I haven't decided yet then I'm going to tack this each half right sides facing um, so it's face down right here this is the wrong side up and I'm going to pin it all the way around each half I'm going to have the halves overlap because I want this to be a pillow sham and I don't want there to be a gap in the bottom when the foot where the foam's sticking out I want it to actually be nice and overlapped but I want it to be openable so that you can pull that foam out for washing so when you next see this I'm going to have this cut in half going to have it hemmed so you'll see the raw hems on this side because it'll be wrong side up and I'm going to have it pinned to the top unit and um, that's where the, where we are in this process we're almost done okay. okay so I've got this seamed up now well at least pinned up what I've done is I've gone ahead and cut that piece in half put them this is wrong side up so this is the hem this is the right side on the other side and what I've done is I've overlapped I took care to overlap the same one on top each time so that this one this side is on top on both pins and I've gone ahead and pinned all the way around now what I've discovered here is that um, when I originally put this piece on this round piece that goes around the whole strip I should have seamed it first thing and then sewed it as a tube onto this part oh well I'm gonna have to sew that up when I'm done but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to stitch around here and um, hopefully turn this inside out or right side out I should say and be pretty much done now I'm looking at this and I'm seeing that this is wanting to gap open right now I'm hoping that that doesn't happen once this pillow sham part is complete um, I suggest for in the future projects to make more of an overlap here on the between the two halves uh, so that the pillow sham effect is pretty impressive and there's no gapping open when the pet lays down or anything like that <coughs> excuse me uh, so let me go ahead and sew around turn this thing inside out I'm gonna go ahead and put my little poly foam in the middle and we'll see what we have and um, that will be the end of my demonstration I so as you can see this has been rat approved very nice thank you Lily and what we have here um, is a comfortable little bedding for rats it's got a little burrito pocket for them to go in and um, is generally cleanable because of the fact that there is um, a sham on the bottom that if I stuffed this less well or if I had a little button here or if I overlapped the sides more it would be um, more covering and that's what I would recommend that you do um, I made this part um, just about 10% bigger than the actual pet size of the circle here we have what equi equates to the circle part and um, I made two half sizes that were slightly bigger than it of course this is not to scale but I recommend, I think in hindsight, that these two pieces be about 20% bigger than the actual size of the bed that you eventually want to create. That'll make a nice taco shell for the animal to sleep under. And it will also make the bottom big enough to make the pillow sham. Because remember, you're making one, two, three, four large circles three being the base color and one being the the soft fuzzy part and one the size that you actually want for the bed the bed calc is determines how long you want this strip remember it's the diameter of this piece times pi 3.14 and um, that's basically the tutorial I hope you enjoyed it and um, I hope that you were able to make a big one 
because um, this also um, I had a problem here because I should have sewn this immediately and um, also when I was attaching this bottom piece I see these little pleats here I didn't actually space it correctly all the way around so you may want to be more careful than I was but um, there's my story and I'm sticking to it pet bed in about two hours save yourself eighty dollars